Yo, this is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors are Alpha Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company. Get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. Yusuf Mackey's killer didn't serve more than a year in prison. Joshua Mulner was found not guilty of murder and not even guilty and cleared of manslaughter too. I've spoken about this case and done this story already, but recently it has emerged that his mother, the mother of Yusuf Mackie, the victim, has passed away. And the family actually say it is due to a broken heart. It is in connection to a, a case of sepsis, and she passed away from this at 55. Since the death of her son, Debbie Mackie, Yusuf's mother, has spent time campaigning against knife crime and stood up in Manchester C Cathedral and spoke about the day that her son was stabbed in the heart. Debbie told everybody that was there for the anti-knife crime summit about the moment she learned he was gone. When a surgeon turned to her in the hospital and shook his head, she bravely recalled how it felt not to be able to hold her son before, because his body was considered to be evidence. She spoke of the pain of not being able to be with him in his final moments as he lied dying in the street in Hale Barnes in March 2019. Hale Barnes is an area where some footballers live. It's not very often covered in this channel. Yusuf Mackey was not from a very rich family. He actually got into private school from a scholarship, which is where you do really well at school, to, so well that you can get sponsored as such to go on to a private school. Joseph Mourner, on the other hand, was not very academic. He come from a very rich family and he had failed at pretty much everything he'd done in school. A reputation for violence in the school. Debbie passed away aged 55. So I want to send my condolences to the family of Debbie and also to Yusuf as well. Because this story really didn't sit right with me to the way that this court case went. In relation to the murder of Yusuf Mackey, a boy was cleared. The 17-year-old who couldn't be named at the time, Joshua, who also went to the school, was attacked in Hale Barnes on the 2nd of March. A 17-year-old was boy A and the second was boy 3, remember this? They said that all three boys indulged in idiotic fantasies playing middle-class gangsters. Despite the privileged backgrounds of the defendants, there is no evidence to suggest that Yusuf Mackey was violent in any way, but there is a lot of evidence to suggest that Joshua was. They said that they started to refer to each other as bro and fam, and they called the police fed. The defendants and Yusuf, they, they mentioned specifically that Yusuf was there. They used to smoke cannabis and listen to rap and drill music, the court heard. They would post videos on social media, making threats and posing with shanks or knives. Hours before the fatal stabbing, Boy B uh, arranged a £45 cannabis deal. And the teenagers planned to rob a drug dealer who they considered was a soft target. The robbery went wrong and Yusuf and boy B fled. Boy A, who is Joshua, took a beating. Joshua then later pushed Yusuf and punched him in the face, the court heard. And this is the difference between the version of events, is that Yusuf wasn't there to defend himself. And, jo and Joshua told the court that Yusuf pulled a knife out, and that meant that he pulled a knife out and stabbed Yusuf in the heart. The defendants told police they found Yusuf stabbed and suggested that others were responsible. So we actually then went to great detail to try to cover up this murder. So it wasn't, ju uh, sorry, alleged killing, killing. He wasn't convicted of murder. I can't say he was convicted of murder or that he murdered him but he did kill him the family put a lot of money into this boy's defense joshua's family put thousands of pounds into this defense they even used drill music as a reason to get him away with the actual crime this went in his favor because he they say that he got corrupted by it but i don't think that children that come from these backgrounds are the ones that are corrupted by it people that are growing up on the estates are the ones that are affected by it the, ch the children in the estates growing up around it are the ones that that need to be educated the most on it and also that they are the ones that get extra time in prison due to being connected to it so joshua's case it helped him get away with the case by listening to drill music but in the inner cities that wouldn't be the case joshua's identity was revealed after he turned 18 years old and was released from prison
Mourner was serving a, a sentence in a Young Offenders Institute and was unanimously cleared of murder and manslaughter by jury on the 17th of July 2019 on the basis of self-defence. The former public schoolboy was locked up after admitting possession of a knife that caused Yusuf's wounds and perverting the course of justice by lying about how the, who inflicted the wound to the child. Josh Mulner's fateful confrontation with Joshua, Yusuf, came in a row over cannabis, as they said, and the promising life of Yusuf, he was a straight A student and wanted to become a heart surgeon. The judge took away Joshua's anonymity after he turned 18 due to the significance of the case. Joshua's mother, who was very open and she used to do loads of interviews and she had no problem talking to the press and she always was very quick to say that she can't imagine how Yusuf family feels and what their family must be going through and as they try to come to terms with this Joshua fully accepts his responsibility for the death and in act in an act of self-defense and he understands the importance of what has happened they said he will have to live with what has happened for the rest of his life and, and she also said there were no winners in this case Yusuf's death and Joshua Mourner's conviction were highly unusual for the country's courts because it was knife crime that happened in the backdrop of a very privileged village Yusuf was academically gifted and he won a bursary to one of the country's best independent schools. Mourna grew up in the leafy suburbs and he wanted for nothing materially. But a picture emerged of a teenage rebellion and aggressive posturing that somehow got him twisted up in the death of Yusuf. Joshua Mourner's QC said that it was an accident waiting to happen. By the time Joshua fell out catastrophically with his friend Yusuf, he had left a, a series of schools and his relationship with his family was strained. They also blamed cannabis as well for the fact that Joshua stabbed him for the heart. He began living with his own lawyer, describing his double fantasy life of a juvenile middle class gangster. So like, let's get this straight. Imagine that. Imagine he was so rich and his lawyer must have been getting so much money that he was able to go and live with him. That's unheard of in the city where I grew up. That would not even be, that, I can't even explain how ridiculous that is. Joshua Mulner's father, was, he's called Mark and he's 56 and he's a maths graduate, a company director and a business consultant. His mother, uh, Stephanie, 51, co-founded a chain of Cheshire nurseries. At the age of 15, Joshua Mulner began using cannabis. He wasn't a high achiever in academics and he saw himself as a class, a, a class clown. He was good on the rugby field and he played for Kersal RFC. And he just loved and thrived to create a bad boy image among private school kids in street parties that he went to in the Winslow and Hale Green area of the city. He took a knife and carried a knife often and would show off about this and boast about this and post this on social media. He said he had a pretty cool knife and he would show it off. That's what he said in his trial. Exactly a year before Yusuf was killed, Joshua was a guest at a party. It was held at a £1 million property and there was security at the gated entrance and youngsters from Greater Manchester's independent schools made up the guests. A fight broke out, Mona heard, in his trial and he punched another boy before stepping back and pulling out a knife from his waistband. Joshua Mona denied having a knife at this party in his trial. But young prosecution witnesses would testify that he seemed to take pleasure in taking out out kitchen knives and say nothing, watching as the room fell silent in fear. The picture that emerges of Joshua from someone who knows him is that he wasn't nice, he was middle class and he fell under a bad, more streetwise influences. So see how much evidence there was of Joshua actually being violent and reflecting this. And there was not one example of Yusuf that I've ever seen. So I think this story is frankly a bit of a joke, to be honest, an embarrassment to the family of Yusuf and also to children that have grown up to overcome so much and then to have their life taken by somebody who has everything. So I'd like to pay my respects to the family of Yusuf Mackey and please pay your respects in the comments. Don't forget to follow us online as well for some more street news and also we'll be on the radio later on on hot92.net. Peace.